two and a half minute introduction, I apologize. Each of the candidates is going to have two and a half minutes now to introduce themselves and feel free to share with us whatever they would like to in regards to why they're running, what they hope to achieve, and why they're, they're here facing this public scrutiny and going through what most of us would not like to do. So we appreciate that and sharing it with us. Um, after that, we're going to have Dan, Mr. Stump here will be timing us for that, so keep an eye on him right here in the front. After that, we will have a series of questions that have been both presented by the board and the audience that I've gone through. Uh, we will have one minute to answer each of those questions, and then at the end, there'll be a one-minute summary for each of the candidates to, to sum up, okay? And with that, we'll start here at the end with uh, Tracy. Oh, sorry, I thought you said you started. No, just, that was for the questions. That's just the, just the introduction part. Sorry. Hi, everyone. My name is Tracy Carroll. And for the last four years of my life, the last three elections, for two surveys, and for one uh, survey of the ratepayers, I've stood for representing the families and the businesses in our community by lowering the electrical rates, if possible, through a sale that was financially beneficial to the city of Vero Beach residents and the sale of the Vero Beach power plant and the electrical utility. To the only willing buyer, the only one that stepped forward, the only one that we asked to come forward, and they did, and that was to FPNL. I've also represented the families and the businesses in our community with a lot of hard work for the last three years. As the only owner of a small business, either on city council today or running for election, I represent the needs of the businesses in our community. The businesses in our community do not have a vote for the city council members. They don't have a vote for lowering their electrical rates. And yet individuals like, or companies like Piper and the Hospital Association and the school board are paying millions of dollars more in rates than they would if we're successful with the sale of the Vero Beach Electric to f &L. We owe it. To the families. We owe it to our community. We owe it to the businesses. If we can give them lower rates, that's who I am called to serve for. Thank you. I'm Dick Wainer, and I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about the future, and the future is where I'd like to live. You know, there's three things important here, the beach, the lagoon, and the city, and I'm pleased that City Council Tracy uh, joined the initiative that Mrs. Turner started uh, on the fertilizer ordinance last night. The lagoon is all important, but the city is something we can do more about. We're doing what we can about the lagoon. And our way of life in this city is threatened. There are too few jobs. The brightest need to be able to stay here. And this last city council, we fought back, taking away lots of things like the cemetery, the fountain for children, aerobatics, the 911, the animal control officer, the lifeguards, and so on. It goes, the list goes on and on. My background originally is economics, and after that, accounting, in many years, 50 years of management. But what I became in love with is something called marketing, and that's what I'm gonna talk about for a minute. Uh, and marketing is finding a need and satisfying a profit. And you know, Vero Beach is already a premier brand. It's known around the country, around the world, in England and France, it's known across in Tampa. And how do we build that brand and how do we build a better future for those that follow us? That's what interests me. And you can't do that unless you predicate that somehow or another on history. It's a place, and I'll at the end read some of it, but it's known for graciousness, and it's known for graciousness in living, and visiting, and in play, and recreation. And I think in the future we should double down on those strengths, and the strengths are culture and the arts. They're there. Visiting and play in the beach, and hopefully the lagoon, and living. And you know, this town is going to change a lot in the next few years. I'm here to tell you that, uh, I'm sure Tracy would join me in this, that there are many projects that are going on at the old post office site where the Bank of America is near that has been zoned for a Hampton. Uh, the, okay, the, uh, uh, the diesel plant I'd like to see come alive. I'd like to see the theater come alive. There's just so many things that we can do into the future. 
And so that's what I'm really committed to, and that's why I have the slogan, keep our bureau bureau, but build into the future what those in the past gave us. And that's what I think is important. We can easily do it after the close of the electorate. There, there are plans out there to accomplish that. Thanks, Sam. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joe Gafanti. I'm also known as Buzzy to many of my friends. Uh, if you want to know something about me personally, find somebody who knows me. I've been in Vero Beach for over 35 years, and they will tell you, some, I'm not talking about a politician, but a real people in life, they'll tell you that I'm a great guy. But that's, uh, that's one thing, that's me. <clears throat> there are two main issues at hand. The disposal of the power system and the financial condition of the city. Let's talk about the power system first. Unless somebody is standing in the wings ready to sandbag the residents or three council members vote against the sale, it is a done deal, despite what's just been said. Who could readily, who, who could be ready to heave a monkey wrench? Someone from OUC, FMPA, or even Florida Power and Light. Possibly the transactional lawyer, the city manager, or even the guy sitting next to me, Winger. Where do I stand? Way before your buddy Hare and even before Hetty, I suggested at council meetings that we get shut of the system. Today I believe most city residents and all those in the county who use our power are in favor of a sale, and so am I. <clears throat> we'll wind up with $35 million according to the uh, finance director, that's what she said last night, Ned. Unfortunately, future lawsuits too. And there will be lawsuits and a shortfall in the general fund, which brings us to the second issue, the city's financial condition. Based on the way the police department and animal control guy were handled and the more recent increase in our power bills, one must conclude that even before the sale, we're already in bad shape. I could include thank you. I could include the proposal to divest ourselves of certain city assets. Sort of makes us think we're living in Detroit. Based on personal experience, I don't think you would want that. Our power system is once the power system is gone, there's only two remedies, raising taxes or destroying the city of Vero Beach, something that I've come to enjoy the uh, amenities thereof for the last 35 years. If you want someone with integrity, honesty, openness, and common sense, vote for Brian and myself. If you care for the status quo or an unknown, you must look elsewhere. Mr. Chairman. I don't need, uh, I don't need a couple of minutes to tell you that the city's in trouble. I don't need a couple of minutes to tell you to give me my second vote. And I don't need a couple of minutes to tell you that the reason we're here with the electric company. Glenn, help me out on this. Who, who was the one that made the motion to get that PL here? Who was that? Oh, that was me. Right. And this one over here. And Charlie. Well, yeah, actually, I made the motion. Charlie wouldn't second it at the next meeting. Charlie made the motion, and I did second it. And uh, <clears throat> we have a candidate here that represents the families and the businesses. That's nice. Who's left? Wildlife? I represent the families and the businesses because the businesses don't have a vote. Does she think you're delusional out there? Businesses don't have a vote? A hundred grand? Really? Businesses don't have a vote. Give me a break. You know, it's kind of, when, when politicians or candidates stand up and tell you this kind of nonsense, one of the reasons why I wrote this book, because, uh, I don't think liars, cheats, and thieves should be in charge of governing agencies. So I'll tell you one thing about Buzz, he's right. He's been saying to drag that power plant across the new old bridge. He's been saying that since they built the new new bridge. Anyway, so if you, if you listen to Buzzy, uh, Buzzy's been asking for that a long time. Everybody wants this absolute sign the pledge, yes, vote. <laughs> well, I think that uh, last night we saw at city council, watch the replay, I couldn't even get I couldn't even get a council member to vote in favor of. Yeah, let's just get this thing done. Get her done. Keep Vero Vero. Is the Vero you remember one where the police officers dragged out there? 
Or is the bureau you remember, the one where citizens were welcome to the citizen podium? You know, last night at city council meeting, you said, I've heard enough of this citizen. I've heard enough of this one. Let's close this one down. And that wasn't even me. No. Other people understand when it's me. This wasn't even me. Hello, my name is Amelia Graves, and I'm a fifth generation resident of Vero Beach. I was born and raised here. My family continues to return here, so you can say that we definitely have a love affair with this community. I went from preschool through high school here, graduating from Vero Beach High School. After that, I attended the University of Florida and worked abroad. Thank you, Go Gator Nation. <laughs> and I worked abroad in, for humanitarian organizations, um, helping to structure communities and deliver education systems, feeding systems, and vocational training so that people could begin to move out of poverty and take charge of their own lives and, and thus improve their own communities. I really enjoyed that work and the more I traveled and worked with these different communities, the more I realized how unique and special Vero Beach is. And I was able to take a strong hard look and get a deep perspective of what makes us unique. And I do think that there are a lot of challenges we're facing. We're at a crossroads. Do we want to continue to maintain our city the way we've been maintaining it and embrace the future through being a little bit more efficient, looking at our different technologies and incorporating those into the way that we do business? Can we become more solvent through the sale to the electric system and then position our city to be out of debt with the underfunded pensions? These are all things that can help move us forward. And I think it's really important that we come together as a community and we talk about these things and build consensus so that all the residents are represented and we all are really happy with the city that we live in and continue to go forward together. Thank you. Thank you all. Now we will start with Mr. Gafanti with the first question. Over the last five years, during the economic downturn, obviously local government spending had to be cut. Keeping in mind now that property values are increasing, however, also factoring in the sale of the utility plant, what areas of city government do you feel warrant an increase in spending or a cut in spending? Please be specific. Unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person who can talk without thinking. So I have to give that some thought to give you a real answer. I don't believe that the amenities that are afforded by the city of Vero Beach should be reduced or cut. We have in a pretty much an affluent community here, and I, for one, am most certainly willing to uh, pay more taxes uh, in light of the shortfall from the uh, sale of the uh, power system. I'm willing to pay more taxes to keep Vero Beach uh, the way it was and the reason why I came here, as I said, about 35 years ago. I can't be more specific than that. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't want to see the employees get hurt, specifically the police department or anybody. 30 seconds. Uh, we have to... Uh, we have to maintain our quality of life. And I think we people have worked hard, and that's why we came here. I could have stayed up in New Jersey, and, and uh, but I chose to come down here because of what Vero Beach had to offer. If there's still fat in city departments, I guess that rules these two out as a choice because they haven't done anything about it. So that leaves these three down on here, as your choice. Now, Amelia can tell you what her experiences are. I know a little bit about this guy. He's probably going to get ticked off. But I know that he's managed family trust and played in Wall Street and managed to support himself in Vero Beach for the past 35 years by doing that. I know that during that 35 years, the market's gone up and they're going down, and he's still living on the beach. So I think he probably knows how to manage the ups and the downs. I've been rich and I've been poor. I found out neither one of them is what it's cracked up to be. And I found out that being poor is not all that bad. And if you really look around, you can find out how to do it on a budget. Thank you. After the sale, we're going to be able to, to really take a look and move forward in different areas. 
One area we can move forward in to monetize and bring some more money to cover the shortfall will be to monetize and consolidate excess city property. We have slivers between homes, we have easements that could go back to property owners. We would then not be insuring them, we would not be responsible for maintaining them, and then they would in come into the property tax base. Additionally, after we close with the sale of the utilities, we have 80 fleet vehicles with the utilities that would no longer need servicing. So we can, vehicles that FPNL does not take on will be come back to us and we can sell those for surplus. If we have all these fleet vehicles now out of our possession, do we need fleet management? <coughs> there are different ways that we can look at properties and look at the way we do things to have extra money. And I do think one place if we bring some extra money in needs to be the police department to increase funding there and get some other officers in. Thank you. In terms of going forward, one of the major issues that I think that the city of Vero Beach um, has and, and needs to increase spending to is our recreation department. I served on the recreation commission for a number of years before being uh, voted um, in a city council. And our lifeguards are in a precarious position right now and have been for a number of years, yet the cuts have severely affected our recreation department funding. Our lifeguards have come to us and begged us for medical supplies last night, for medical backpacks, so they could be better prepared. There have been three life-saving events that have taken place at Sexton Plaza, which is not guarded by lifeguards. Our tourism is the backbone of the economic uh, growth in our community. Tourism dollars are up about 10% last year. And yet, if we have a major incident on our beaches, what is the press going to say about Vero Beach? I think that in terms of spending the police, that that should stay uh, pretty much where it is now. But we need to, uh, if we can increase economic development in our community and get more businesses into our uh, closed and unused uh, business facilities, we can increase business tax funding into the city. Thank you. Well, first of all, a couple of misstatements. The city has gone from 534 to 403 budgeted employees next year. That's 2009. This city council took 690,000, roughly, that is off a couple thousand out. So we're making progress. I have to tell you that after the sale of the electric, finances are gonna be very tight. I don't see, I see them as manageably tight, but they're gonna be very tight. So there's not gonna be a lot of money. I'll answer your question though. The two places I'd increase, I would agree with Tracy, are lifeguards, I need, think we need to guard Sexton Beach. I think it's an accident waiting happening. I don't know what we don't understand about uh, Vero Beach. The other is the sewer utility is becoming increasingly, uh, spinning up more and more cash. In the long run, we've got to figure out how to do something about septic tanks, and I, I think that's a major concern. Uh, that's my answer. Thank you. Mr. We're gonna start this one with uh, Brian. Last week, the school board split their vote on a public health care clinic for their employees. <coughs> Do you think this or that type of thing is something the city should look into to help contain its health care cost? And is that something that the government should be involved in? Government needs to stay the heck out of private business, and there's plenty of doctors in this community that do a very fine job, and government needs to stay the heck out of private business. I think one area where this needs to be addressed is health care for city council members. I don't think it's appropriate for part-time employees of the city to take health care. And that would be a substantial savings to the city in itself. How much would the savings be to the city? Excess of $10,000. That's a substantial savings to the city. Um, I believe that health care clinics is not an a uh, a necessary function of government. In a limited government, the government should provide only what is necessary to do the business that the city requires. And this, uh, health care clinics would not fall within those parameters. I don't believe health care clinics would fall within the parameters. And I would tell you, this city council has been dedicated to get our benefits under control. Pensions, use or lose it sick pay and so on. I think we've done a good job. There are four of us here today, and uh, I think uh, all five of us said we've done a good job. Health care clinics, no. 
for a person who still bends down to pick up a penny on the ground, $10,000 is a lot of money. And I'm talking about myself. Remember, Dirksen said 10,000 here, 10,000 here, sooner or later we'll be talking about money. I personally am not going to accept any remuneration if I get elected from the city of Vero Beach. I most certainly don't need the life of the, uh, the insurance. So I'm not really in tune with that. But in answer to the question, I would say I join Brian and that government needs to stay out of our private lives. Thank you. Uh, given the voters' wishes of selling the electric utility, please describe your understanding of the FM FMPA's involvement in this and how you plan to overcome the hurdles put in place by the FMPA to possibly derail the sale. I don't know that it's fair to categorize the FMPA as trying to derail the sale. I think any times that you're in negotiations with people, you shouldn't characterize them in a negative way because that might not help them come to the table more willingly. I think that the FMPA has legitimate concerns about what's going on, but from my understanding and from Amy's update, she's been working hard to help the FMPA to be compensated for those things, and those plans can go forward to take on their obligations, to take on their power, and the loss of their customers. I think that hopefully the negotiations between FPNL and FMPA will continue forward and we'll be able to vote on them and move forward and conclude the sale. Uh, I'm sorry, you failed to answer the question of exactly what is the FMPA, and I think that was part of your question, and I'll answer that for you um, I, in case. I thought the rules were not supposed to address the candidates directly, meaning to address the audience. I will answer the question that you asked, which was the uh, what is the FMPA? Comprised of 31 separate municipalities throughout the state of Florida, the FMPA was created uh, back in the uh, late 70s to uh, provide a, um, a format where uh, power could be purchased at um, a lower cost when um, utilizing all of the different 31 uh, municipalities. As of today, those 31 municipalities create a board of directors of the FMPA, which is a very large organization with 70 full-time employees. As any corporation wants to do, they want to stay in business. Their board of directors is made up of utility directors and city managers, for the most part, who are and do have a vested interest in continuing the FMPA, thereby we may see some of the delays today because as in a uh, line of dominoes, the concern from many members of the FMPA is that once one domino falls, will the rest fall? The city of Vero Beach is that domino leaning precariously that is concerning the FMPA right now. In August, two years ago, I was on the Finance Commission and uh, then I was elected in November. And we made the decision, we made the decision that the way out of this, the way to sell the Florida, to sell the electric utility in the Florida Power Line was to enlist Florida Power, uh, Florida Power Line and OUC to negotiate and work for us to get solve the FMPA issue. And that's been our strategy ever since then. I know AB will back me. We've had that conversation. Uh, the OUC and in particular FPL have business dealings with FPM, FMPA. They're in a much better position to negotiate. And I trust Florida Power Line is going to get this done for us. I really do. That's my answer. I have none other. Clearly, FMPA, OUC, are not our friends. They never would have accepted the contract and the shenanigans that went on when we did get involved with the OUC. So we have, we have to approach them as one of at least some fear 
of uh, them being uh, disingenuous. They are, in fact, in business to make money. That's what they're there for. That's what they degenerated into, that's for sure. They are not concerned with Vero Beach. I'm sure they're more concerned with their bottom line. If, if Florida Power and Light, which I said a long time ago, Florida Power and Light should have maintained or gotten a more, be, had a more active role in the negotiations with those two unity, units, the FMPA and OUC, because they were more capable of dealing with them. That didn't happen until apparently just late, of late. I will answer the question, but first, Pilar! Craig, you're taking health insurance. God bless you, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. You know, the governing agency, or governor uh, representatives, the public should be happy to pay them a decent wage for the amount of work that they put in. I think Craig will tell you, Pilar will tell you, it's not a part-time job. And we should be happy to pay them a decent wage. What would I do? Glenn, you know what I would do. We've talked about this. What do you do if FMPA doesn't, doesn't cooperate? What do we do? Declare war, right? It's pretty simple. We know. A pledge was recently given to each of you as well as to the press that asked this question. As a candidate in the November 2013 Vero Beach City Council election, I pledge to support the sale of the city-run electric utility system to Florida Power and Light and uphold the will of the voters. Did you sign the pledge and please explain why you did or did not do so? Yes, I did sign it. Uh, the document was asked uh, for today by the uh, Vero Beach um, City Attorney. I have the document with me and I'll be uh, leaving here and going uh, to the uh, City Hall to turn that in. Why did I sign it? For four years, three elections, two referendums, and one survey, I have made the commitment to the families and the businesses of this community that I would stand by their needs to lower electrical rates by culminating a sale to the Vero Beach Electric. And that's why I'm running again this year. A lot of people ask me, Tracy, why are you running? Why don't you just retire and, and your kids are graduating high school and, and have a good time? Because I made a commitment and I will stand by that commitment. And that's why I signed this commitment because I've made the commitment verbally over and over and over. And I will stand by the voters. Well, I think all of you have in front of you a press release which has been in the press and it says I support the sale and it goes and it, it, it covers the uh, referendums and it covers the contract. I did not sign a pledge only because the pledge was to a group that was had financing from Florida Power and Light, but I have come to the same wording or the same conclusion. I don't believe I could do that. And I will tell you that under the contract that we have, Florida Power and Light, if something is unreasonable to city council, Florida Power and Light can say unreasonable is reasonable and make it good financially or otherwise. This contract it is going to happen. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not. That provision is in the contract and some of us worked hard to have such a provision so that Bureau Beach could keep its 30 or $35 million working capital. Hope you answer your question. I received that in the mail and I didn't sign it because I don't understand why the author of that proposed contract has any standing in the matter with respect to me and the uh, how I would vote if I were on the city council. So I obviously I didn't sign it. It's, to me, for me, it would become a legal contract and the author has no standing in offering legal contracts as far as I'm concerned. As far as the actual sale of it, I most certainly would go along if the bulk of the public was in favor of it. As I said before, 15 years ago or so, I was in favor of uh, dismantling the power plant. Uh, Brian said that. So I most certainly stand by that. I have a record of opposing, uh, uh, supporting the sale of the, of the plant. 
of system. Why in heaven's name would I sign a document that would bind me to a particular vote on an issue that is not yet before the council and sign that agreement with a special interest group? I'd have to be crazy to do something like that. They'd have to, I'd have to be nutty. To, to put my yes vote in jeopardy by signing an agreement ahead of time. Now, I, I, I don't think I'm interested. Uh, I think anybody that's watched me knows exactly where I stand. And uh, I love Dick Winger's, uh, his um, counter signature. What he did was he signed an agreement. Is that it right there, Dick, in front of you? Could I, could I see it just for a second? He signed an agreement to, uh, as detailed in the contract, signed February 19, 2013. So I went to City Hall and said, give me a copy of the contract signed on that day. And there's no contract. So I don't know what the heck he agreed to. I did not sign the pledge because the organization that asked me to sign the pledge just appeared a few weeks ago and doesn't have any standing in our community or members that I could speak to. Um, I, I think it's incumbent upon everyone who is in city council to represent the voters of this city. The voters of this city, has, as everyone has stated over and over again, have, have said they want this sale to go through. Through two referendums, they said we want to sell Vero Beach Electric. And so it's incumbent upon city council members not to be representing self-interest, but to be representing the citizens of Vero Beach. As I mentioned earlier, the Taxpayers Association, we regularly invite government officials to speak to us regarding their annual budgets. What specific qualifications would you bring to the council to address the many tough financial decisions now facing the city? A year in the, as Vice Chairman of the Finance Commission, two years, three years of building overall the budgets, 50 years in business, running businesses up to two, three, four hundred million dollars. Uh, a background in economics, a background in accounting, a background in financial analysis, uh, continuing studies at UVA. Uh, I'm, that is something I'm very well qualified. There's some things like tra uh, traffic flow, I may not be as well qualified. Finance is my strong strength. Many years ago, I was told that it's not so important how much money you make, it's what you do with what you make, and that applies to the city of Vero Beach, as far as them receiving revenues in the form of taxes and what they do with the money. I have, without getting too personal, I have watched my pennies uh, very carefully and allow them through a little bit of hard work and a lot of luck grow to, well, let's say grow. And I'm very careful with my money. I've always been careful with my money and, the, and that of my monies of my family members. I most certainly would act the same way with the city of Vero Beach money and your tax dollars. <laughs> Over over 40 years uh, um, of handling my money and other people's money, one of the things I became very expert in is the sniff test. And if it doesn't pass the sniff test, it doesn't get a yes vote. And there's a lot of junk out there that gets thrown before city council members to please vote on that does not pass the sniff test. My experience is I'm very good at the sniff test. When I was working for humanitarian organizations, we were required to have a specific budget to deliver specific services to a specific amount of people. There was no increasing that budget, and we had to make it as efficient as possible because these weren't decisions like, should we have Christmas tree lights? They were decisions like, how many children will be able to eat this month? How many teachers will we be able to employ? How will we change these people's lives? I worked within small budgets and had to make every dollar stretch and make really hard choices. 
There are, of course, times when I want to expand our budget because in my heart, of course, I want to have more children entering in school or have more teachers employed, but just financially, we couldn't do it. And I had to tell people no in the most dire of straits. So I'm used to making hard choices that aren't easy to make, but financially are the right ones. My main qualification in terms of the budgetary question is that I have more experience than anyone sitting at this table in crafting city budgets in that I have served the last uh, three budget cycles for the city of Vero Beach where we have uh, taken a hard look at many, many aspects. In fact, if you sat through budget hearings uh, prior to three years ago when um, the uh, mayor and um, uh, former mayor, uh, Ms. Turner, and I came on, uh, budget hearings were not as extensive and did not go through every single line item like we have. Um, also, I serve as the accountant for my small business and have since the year 2000. I ran a small business um, with offices both in uh, Fort Lauderdale and here in Vero Beach and I've, I've crafted their business and ran that successfully. I've served on the board of directors of many uh, large nonprofits, both on a national, a statewide, and a regional level. So my experience in terms of the uh, budgetary needs of the city is extensive. What do you each feel is the role of local government, and what are the essential services that local city government should be providing? Please be specific. I recently wrote that Patrick Henry said that uh, that government was a necessary evil. It supposed to protect common good citizens from the evil people. And that's what the government should be doing. And that's why we have a police force. That's why we have paved roads. Anything that has to do with the commonality of one group of people and individuals with another group of people and individuals, that's the role that government should be involved with. Uh, that's, that's what I believe. I, I think that in the United States we have a reasonable working, working of that, uh, that philosophy, and I see no reason why it should uh, change. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, this is specifically the uh, city council of government, city government, and uh, what should they be doing? Let's see. How about potholes, uh, mowing the lawns in the parks, lifeguards, police, fire protection? Uh, I think I got them all. And then stay out of private business, stay out of our lives, cut the taxes back, stop the nonsense. The great thing about local government is it's not distant from the people it's representing. We're right here, and we can approach that government, talk to them at the podium, and say, as citizens, this is what we want, this is what we don't want. And it's really important that local government respond to the citizens in its community. It's really incumbent upon local government to preserve life, to have lifeguards, to have police officers, and that is the role that local government should have as essential services and on top of that should be res responding to what the citizens of the community who pay taxes at local government desire. The role of local government is to provide those services necessary that the local business community cannot provide. If a local business can provide it at a lesser cost, then we should transfer those needs over to the business community. The role of a limited government is to provide for public safety and the public needs, such as roads and lifeguards, that we choose to offer at a level beyond what the business community could provide. Well, in Florida, we have 410 home rule communities, and each community has to decide for itself what that means, what we will provide. We do have to provide all the necessary functions, like police, public safety, and so on. And I believe the people of Vero Beach want things like street parades, they want the cemetery, they don't want signs on the beach. I believe those many, many more things, uh, street festivals, lifeguards and so on are things they want. 
and therefore we should respond to those things and find a way to do those things that the majority of the people want. The majority of the people want the electric so let's get it done, let's get it passed. But I think our, the beauty, and I want to, I guess I'll end this way. Thank you all for being here, and thanks all to all the people that contact me on the phone in one way or another, saying this is necessary, this is something we should do. And that's one of the beauties of home rule and local government in Florida. We can respond to what you want us to do, and thank you for being here. As a follow-up to that, what services presently provided by the city of Vero Beach do you feel could be effectively privatized in order to save costs? Starts with me. Yes. Well, uh, you know, save costs. When uh, when I was on city council, one of the things they did was, was save some costs in the city manager's department. That cost us 150 plus thousand dollars a year, and I combined it with. Um, the uh, uh, public works, and uh, then some new people got elected, and they wanted to have their name on, uh, on the hiring of the of the new city manager, and uh, we were doing fine, and uh, we added one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So those are the kinds of things we need to just stop. Stop hiring people that we don't need. Let's combine some departments. Let's do some things to make it run efficiently, and we're not doing that. I think one area in, this, in Vero Beach that could definitely be privatized is our fleet management. While our police vehicles cannot be privately done, we can contract with the sheriff's department, but the rest of our vehicles could be privately managed, and that would reduce the cost that we have right now having a fleet management. The electrical system. Well, I think I think this city manager is doing a good job. Uh, I'll give you an example of water and sewer. We privatized the lab and we cited many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, I know my fall is looking at many ways to privatize. The one he privatizes was mowing the areas that aren't uh, irrigated, which I haven't been happy with the results so far. But I think this city manager and I think his managers are looking at every possibility. I'll give you one that we've looked at a couple of times, which is garbage or called waste disposal. And we can't find anybody that could do it as cheaply or as well as we can. Uh, this is hard work. <coughs> department by department, seeing where it can be done <coughs> outside inside. And I think the city manager and his staff are committed to that. I support their efforts. The waste management system is a good example that Mr. Winger just mentioned, that the city does it cheaper. If the city can't do things cheaper than private industry, and the city should be able to do it because it doesn't have to make a profit, then I think you should look at the management or, and, and see where they, the managers, can make an alteration in their uh, operation. We, we have, a, I think we have a good system the way it is now. And I don't believe in privatization of essential uh, things that the city needs, such as the waste, what, waste garbage collection, uh, police, any, everything like that. What, if any, services provided by the city and county would you consider combined? I would no, not... It's Amelia. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, I, as I spoke of earlier, I think our fleet management of our law enforcement vehicles could be combined, and I think it would be a benefit to the city to do that. As for other services, the police department is one where I would not want to see a combination occur. I think we have a fantastic department that's been able to maintain a two-minute response time, and we are able to employ um, a police chief based on qualifications and credentials and have him oversee a smaller, smaller, a smaller institution and provide great service to the city. I 
think uh, rather than saying combined, I would rather use the phrase to share resources. I think there's a number of issues. I've met with individuals uh, with the uh, natural gas issues, and the school board has put a lot of buses and their fleet onto the natural gas. If the police uh, chose, if the city of Bear Beach chose to put our police as well as the sheriff's office, we could utilize some um, cost-effective uh, sharing of resources. The other place that I feel we could share resources, and that is in our tourism tax. Uh, dollars. As uh, most people uh, realize, um, all of the tourism tax that is produced by the hoteliers in the city of Vero Beach goes into the county coffers for uh, the utilization and determination of the tourism tax. And the city of Vero Beach has no say at all, one vote on the entire council um, to determine where that tourism tax goes, even though 60% of the funds are generated from hoteliers in the city. I think a sharing of resources between the city and the county would be very beneficial. I think we need to grow up a little bit and understand the role of each government. And I'll give you an example. I'm proud of the city last night, the first reading passed uh, reasonably identical or ordinance to what the county had. There's things that the county can do better, building department, uh, health department, and so on. And I think we need, into the years ahead, to work more cooperatively. You know, uh, and it's quieted down quite a bit, county versus I don't even want to say it, but you got to get where I'm going. We need to work together what we're good at. I would never give up the police. We have 420 second reaction time. We save many lives a year. But I think there are many areas where we can work properly, and we should make our codes, our regulations work together. And where they can do it better or we can do it better, so be it. Uh, one that we can do better is South Beach, as an example. And we should continue to do that. What they can do better, let them do it. I'm all for it. Based on the past performance of the county commissioners present and in the past, I would say that I, the city of Vero Beach should stay as far, far away from them as possible. We have no control. We have no control over the county, and they know it. There's only a handful of people that come before the city council to try to keep them in order. Myself and Mr. Hattie and a few others in the past, a handful. I don't know what goes on in the county, and based on the things that shenanigans that they've got involved with, uh, I would say that the city of Vero Beach should stand by itself. Let's see. The city council members make ten thousand dollars. County commission makes about a hundred thousand with pennies and everything else. So here's what we can do: the city could incorporate the unincorporated areas, we could get rid of five $100,000 employees, and the city council could take over. What do you think, Paul? We could do it, right? Yes, we're almost finished. Um, this was a follow-up question. In regards to the FMBA, do you feel that a passive stance is more advised as far as the Board of County Commissioners has recently invested resources to counter the FMBA? Do you advise following in that footsteps or do you employ just taking a more passive approach to that? I feel emphatically that our community needs to band together to do whatever we can to get this deal done. And I applaud the County Commission for taking a stance on this and placing funds available to utilize to move forward with this deal. We did a referendum of the ratepayers. And as you all know, 66% of the ratepayers, which included a large number of people within our county and not within our city, said, yes, please go forward with this. It is our responsibility as city council members to listen to what not only the residents, but also what the business owners and what the individuals throughout our county have to say. And we have to take a positive stance and to move forward with the sale. I've been in court many times with big companies like Cargill and Unilever and Dirty and so on. But I remember a judge, Judge Johnson in <coughs> Richmond, Virginia at U.S. District Court he says it all comes down to money. I can solve it or you can solve it. You know, where we are is it comes down to money. 
And I've said all along, we should follow the lead of Florida Power and Light, and we should take their direction. And I don't, I don't want to do anything that upsets that apple cart. They are negotiating with FMPA. The city is not. And that's how I feel it should be. I support it. And uh, I'm sure the two of them were to work it out. I have every confidence because FMPA has a lot to gain in lower cost energy with transmission. Uh, and money speaks. How much money? I don't know. I'm sure Amy doesn't know either. But I really believe we have to take Florida Power and Light's lead. I most certainly sympathize with the county residents who are locked into buying power from the city of Vero Beach. I publicly stated years ago I found it offensive that the city of Vero Beach would take advantage of these people and they claimed whether true or not they had they were being taxed without having representation. As far as the young FMPA is concerned, I think we learned this morning that Florida Power and Light is in negotiations with the FMPA. I think the county should mind their own business and keep to the uh, corruption that they're used to, and keep it out of the keep it out of the uh, out of our business, the city's business of trying to sell the power plant, power system. Well, there's two ways to do it. One way is to elect me. Other way is to hire me. Either way, I'll get it done. The city already employs two transactional attorneys at $500 an hour each. I think their expertise in this area surpasses anyone else in this room who would go and lobby on our behalf. And I also don't. I also think that while maybe $10,000 isn't considered a substantial savings, additional costs each month for these attorneys or lobbyists at $100,000 would be considered a substantial savings. So I do not think we need a lobbyist. I think we have two attorneys who have dedicated their time and efforts and are reporting back to us that that's what they are doing. We're now going to give each of the candidates one minute to summarize. We started with Tracy with the introductions. We're going to, if you don't mind, if we could pass it. Oh, down. I'm sorry. I mean, that's okay. Thank you for having us here to your luncheon today. Thank you to John for moderating this and asking the questions. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you. This is an important election and we all have priorities. Of utmost priority is getting the sale concluded. After that, we have to look at how do we want Bureau to remain intact after the sale. There are a lot of different models out there that show after the sale we will be able to continue to deliver services and be the community that we all love and know and we can work consistently to become more efficient. This community is like no place else, and I really believe that we can continue to go forward as strong and possibly stronger than before. So thank you, and I hope I can earn your vote November 5th. You know, uh, as a candidate, I have to vote for somebody too. And when I, I think about, okay, who, if I am elected, who is it that I want to serve with? And when I think about that, and I think about what we have to deal with, here's a couple of things I want. I don't want council members that will sit silent like these two did last night at the meeting, or not answer questions, refuse to comply with the law. Wouldn't want that. Amelia might have a hundred wonderful things going for her, but I just don't think that she has the depth of background. If I'm going to have somebody up there, I'm going to want somebody with backbone enough to speak up and speak and speak the truth. And I only know of one other candidate up here other than me that's willing to do that. And that would be you, Mr. Gafani. Well, thank you. I've been following the city council meetings for approximately 25 years. And I had hoped that something would change. It never did. I thought, and actually thought, and hoped that something would change. It hasn't. It's got the same operation of smoke-free back room wheeling and dealing by the city manager and staff and gets a stamp of approval by, by the uh, city council. So that's why I decided to run. I will do this only once. Whether I win or lose, I will not run again. 
I want to thank those in this audience who came here with an open mind, uh, rather than to read one of the local newspapers and get misinformed about what's going on. Well, I, I've been privileged to serve you, and I will serve you again. I gotta tell you, it's a pain to me, you know what. But uh, what I want to tell you is about Keep Our Bureau Bureau. And I'm gonna read this. It means nothing less than Bureau Beach aspiring to be what it always has been, with the advantages of being used in the future. And what it has it always been? It's been a place where the best of old Florida is nurtured. Filled with community pride, but not boastful or arrogant. With well-kept private property and public land, where people work together on issues. That embraces a respect for the natural environment and its history. You can fall in love in your first visit and only make your home. It does not succumb to trends, but it establishes its own image. And you know, I, as I reflect on the last two years, it's been a pain. But I will tell you that I, I am proud to have worked uh, with Mr. Fletcher, Mrs. Turner, Mr. Kramer, and Mrs. Carroll. And I think we've made substantive progress, and I think you look like hard in correcting some of the problems of the past. And if you like me again, I'll do my very best to serve you and continue to make some corrections and get the electric done and go on with life. Quickly, I've heard some uh, pretty amazing comments today. The OUC is not our friends. If the public is for the sale, I'd have to be nutty to agree to sell the plan. There's corruption in the county. And the most crazy thing was that someone said that they wanted to fight the status quo. When that was my logo three years ago, was no to the status quo. I guess I became the status quo, which is pretty amazing to me. If the status quo means that three years ago and today I'm still a mom, yeah. I have two teenage daughters. One turns 18 today. Scary thought for me. That's the youngest one. Uh, three years ago, I was a business owner, and I'm still a business owner, and the only person running for council who's a business owner in the city of Vero Beach. And I'm a community volunteer. I spend an inordinate amount of time working with the community on nonprofit board of directors and um, on projects throughout our community, uh, through our community. And if you want that, if you feel that's important to have that type of status quo, then I guess I'm part of the status quo. But the other part of the status quo that I will continue to be for, and that is to move our city forward by lowering the electrical rates, hopefully with the sale of the plan to FPNL. So I hope if those things are important, if that status quo is important, then vote for Tracy Carroll. I think on behalf of everybody here, I'd like to thank all the five candidates for coming up here. Like I said, everybody who's here today, we really appreciate that. And uh, I think it's important that people are informed on the issues so that they can make a educated decision. And I think it's important that everybody vote. Apathy is very detrimental to a democracy. And I think we need to have as large a turnout, no matter who you're supporting. I think it's important that people get out and vote and have their voices heard, no matter who they're supporting. So I appreciate you all coming before the taxpayers today and putting up with questions. Like I said, I would not want to do it, so I appreciate you all being before us and joining us here today, and I'd like to again thank everybody else for attending. I just want to remind you again that next month we'll be having Chairman Spackman from the Hospital District will be our guest. He has a lot of important things to share with us. Like I said, there are a lot of things going on up at the hospital right now. If you've been following that in the paper, it is important, and I, I think it is something that we really need to stay and pay close attention to. So. Thank you all again for joining us, and thank you again to all the candidates for joining us here today and, and coming. Thank you.